Looking for a way to share a USB flash drive without passing it around? Tired of having someone borrow a USB drive and then not returning it? Stay tuned and I'm going to show you a way to handle this. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about using virtual here to share a USB flash drive in your smart home. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. Now, here's what we're going to be covering. First, what is virtual here? And I think once you know more about it, you're going to want to take a look at it for your own smart home. Then we're going to go about installing virtual here. And then I'm going to show you about how to share a USB flash drive with virtual here. And we're just scratching the surface on this potential, but there's only so much time in the video. So let's go ahead and get started. Well, with any video, you've got to start somewhere. And the thing we're going to start off with is talking about what is virtual here. And I think the best way to explain this to you is to say, okay, you've got a Raspberry Pi 4, and you can use this on some of the earlier versions of Raspberry Pi, but that's going to maybe depend on how much you'll be able to do and how fast it's going to work. So you've got a Raspberry Pi 4, you've got a flash drive. What do these two have in common? And the answer is by themselves, not much. I mean, you can use the USB drive as storage, but you're not going to be able to share it with anybody. And that's where virtual here comes in. And here's a good picture of what its capabilities are. So this gives you an idea of where it can fit in your smart home. So you can either run it on a VM, if that's what you've already got in your smart home, you can run it in the cloud, you can run it on a PC, you've got a server, you've got a Raspberry Pi, you got an Android smartphone. I mean, you've virtually, there's almost no platform that you can't run this with. What we can do is we'll get started using our good old trusty friend, the Raspberry Pi 4. But as with anything, we've got to get the image ready. So that's what we're going to jump on next. Well, I've got my trusty SD card reader or micro SD card, however you want to talk about. We're going to put the card I'm going to use in this case in there. And I've already got it set to go into my Intel NUC over here and we'll plug it in. So we we'll, should get a message. Okay, well, there's already something on there, but <laughs> not for long. So we'll go to Belena Etcher. And if you've already got a card ready to go, that's fine. But I'm assuming in any of these videos that you are starting from scratch or you may want to start from scratch because let's face it, if you got a working configuration, do you want to put something else on it? And I think the answer is going to be no. So we will pull up the file here and let's go over here to downloads. And then we've got that and we've already got the card selected by default. So we'll get this done here in just a minute. It's decompressing the image. And this is something, if you're doing this a fair amount, it's a good idea to always make sure you've got the latest versions of whatever you're going to be working with, because it's possible you might run into that one in a thousand condition where there's a bug that's going to cause it not to work right. So always, you know, as a general, at least have it ready to go. Although you may not use it say like the day it comes out, but let's go ahead and have it ready for when you do want to do a periodic upgrade. I don't always stay right at the bleeding edge of the different Raspberry Pi OS distributions. I'll sit there and say, you know, let, let's go ahead and just get it on the one I know is working. And then over time, I'll look at the newer version because you may have some incompatibilities that you don't necessarily want to go fighting right out of the gate. Now, if you've not burned a card or, or, or written an SD card or micro SD card for Raspberry Pi with Belena Etcher, it's going to go through a two-step process. It's flashing at first, so it's going to verify it. And especially if you're using a card that is maybe 
not the quality for one reason or other, or you've had issues with it, verifying the card or validating it, as Blaina Etcher is saying, is going to be a good thing to do because would you rather spend a little more time getting the card ready now or a lot of time later? So we're just about done here. Okay, so it says finished, or finishing rather. It got it ready to go. It does not have it mounted, which is good. Now, before we go to put the card in the Raspberry Pi 4, what we want to do is make sure that we've got one other very important step done and that's to get it to where it can run in a headless configuration so if you're like me and i don't have a bunch of keyboards laying around that we want to make sure we've got one step ready to go so we'll go down here anywhere within the directory and we'll click new uh, text document and we'll call it ssh and we do not want a file extension on it We'll hit enter. Windows, God love it, is going to say it may not be working, but that is a file. If you've not set a Raspberry Pi up before in headless operation, that's going to get it so that it will automatically respond to SSH because that's going to be important later on so we can get into it and complete the rest of the installation process. So what we're going to do here is we'll close that screen out and then we will go down here and we will eject the drive and then I will take out the four. We'll go to demo cam over here. I will put the card in and then since the cabling came loose, we're going to have to reattach the power for the fans on the back of the Bramble case and that's in there you gotta watch those as you put them in because sometimes they can be just a little on the touchy side so we'll slide that all the way in it's locked in we'll plug in the network connection and then the power had a minor technical malfunction that i had to go take a look at and i when i put the card back in i didn't have the pin set up right for the fan on the back because when i turned it on the raspberry pi came on but the fan wasn't spinning. Kind of important. So we'll give that just a bit to come up and then we can proceed to the next step. Okay, now the Raspberry Pi's had a little time to come up. So depending on what I'm doing, I use one of two different clients to get into it. You can either go to Putty, which is nothing wrong with that one, or I use something occasionally called Royal TSX or TSV or Royal TS. I'll get out here eventually that allows you to have multiple systems configured up to 10 when you're on the uh, the uh, the shareware client. But we'll go ahead and go into PuTTY this time, and we'll go in here by its old name, and we'll click Yes, and we'll enter the credentials. Okay, so that's ready to go. Now we'll go to the steps of installing the client. So you can, there's a dedicated image you can download, but I'm going to use a command called wget, which is basically a command line HTTP client, and we'll pull everything we need to that way. So I've got my notes written down here. So we'll do wget, and it is HTTPS, www.virtualhere.com, forward slash sites, forward slash default, forward slash files, forward slash USB server. And since we're doing this on a Raspberry Pi, we'll do V H U S B D A R M. And it should go get it. And it's already gotten it done. Gee, that took forever, didn't it? So now we will do CH mod. If I can spell here, CH mod plus X. And what that does, that makes it executable. So we'll do dot forward slash V H U S B. D A R M and then we will actually start it running dot forward slash V H U S B if I could spell here U S B D A R M and we'll let it run in the background. Now we will move over here to our Intel NUC and then we'll fire up the client from that side. Now, when you're ready to get things working, we'll first have to go out and get a client from the Virtual Here website. So if you go to the client page and scroll down here, you'll need to pick the one appropriate for your system. So what we'll do is, since I'm running 64-bit Windows 10, we'll click on that version. I've already got it downloaded. And it really wasn't an install process that 
came up for me, just the client came up directly. So when you're ready to do this, then you can just right click and says, use this device. And there's a problem with the drive. Really? Okay, well, it's because there's nothing on it. So you notice back over here in your other window, there's something there. So what we can do here is we'll just go from the downloads page and we will copy a file over there. Should take just a minute. And that's not bad. I'm granted we're over a wired connection. So it was that simple to get something in place quickly. So if you've got people who are going to, you've got things you want to share. Let's see, what's another one that we can put on here? Uh, we can do, well, Dropbox installer is another one. We just, so that way you can point them to that. Again, all very quick to get on there. If you're wanting to share, say, if you've got some folks that are wanting to use Stream Deck, you know, you can, instead of already having to go download the file, you can just put it over here and make sure you get it into the window before you release that now this one's going to take a little bit longer but nothing really outside the realm of reality so this is very much a easy system to put in place you can see what is involved it's a nice way of letting you share files while having to pass a drive around somebody putting it in their computer and then everybody gets distracted let's face it that happens so then you don't have to worry about not getting a usb drive back granted they're not that expensive but it's more the point of the thing they just have to go download the client you can point them to a website let them do that and then they can go grab whatever file they need to to get this up and running now something you want to remember to do while there is a way if you really are using this a lot that you can have it automatically start there are some good security reasons why you don't want that to happen so you can bring this up on it as an as needed service so what you will do is you'll go back here on the screen and you'll just re-enter the sudo space dot forward slash vh usb d a r m and it says it's up and running. So we should go over here. And we should have something in place here. Ah, because we didn't have it auto detect wasn't automatically set up. Okay. And it's got its client. So that, I mean, it's got its uh, connection now. So always, and if, if you don't see it and you think you got everything running, always make sure that the auto find hubs is ready to go so once we've got that and we will click use the device okay it says there's a problem i'm not worried about that because we all know how touchy windows can be so there there's everything that we had in place so you've got a good solution it's ready to rock and roll for when you need to share drive or share files on a drive with one or more people that are uh, visiting you and you really don't want to hand them the USB drive. So enjoy and we'll see you next time. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.